Now let's continue with the second part where we'll use BEC Designer to create a Melon scorecard for customer service. I already have an account with BEC Designer online, so if you don't have one, you can create it here at webbc.com. Uh, you can have it a uh, free 30 day trial account with all the functions. Now, we're going to create a new scorecard using this button here. And uh, I will go for the 100% manual process to show you all the steps. But if you prefer, if you're not sure about what goals you should map on the strategy map, I would suggest you to go for this uh, strategy scorecard wizard. That is very user friendly. It will ask you a number of questions and will help you to build your own scorecard. Uh, but as I promised, we'll do it manually. So I will use this option, a uh, new project with four perspectives. And now I need to give uh, some name to the scorecard. So that I will name it Customer Service Scorecard. Click in Create. And in a few seconds, I have this empty template. I have here my uh, scorecard with four perspectives. If necessary, I can add more perspectives, but I don't think in our case we'll need it. And the strategy map, it's empty, but we can build it. I see these four perspectives here and mission statement on the top. Uh, the first thing that I will do, I will change the mission statement. To do this, I will select this root element and will pick, will type some mission statement here, which uh, supposed to focus, supposed to inspire the team, uh, the customer support team. So what can it be? For example, ensure quick and effective conversation between a client and the company. That's our mission statement. If needed, you have here links, uh, fields to put the links to the vision statement or mission statement if it is longer. Okay, now uh, let's start mapping some goals. Uh, do you remember we had here this model built in the first part of the video? So uh, what goals can we make? What do our customers need? Let's, let's start with this question. Uh, looking at this diagram, I would say that uh, they need to have easy to use knowledge base. That's, uh, that's what we have discussed here, making the knowledge base easy to use. Okay, so I will go to KPI step and I will map this item here easy to use knowledge knowledge base okay uh, this will be visualized on the map what else uh, what else do the customers need uh, looking at this this uh, part in the left where we have some conversation between uh, the car, customer and the, the company, I would say that uh, there is a need for this, what we have just formed in mission statement, quick and effective conversation. Uh, I will create now the goal uh, from this map. It's the same as it we did from the KPI step. Well, let me show you another way to create this goal. Okay. Uh, I will select parent, which is customer, and I will put here uh, the new goal, which is quick and effective conversation between a client and the company. Okay. Well, uh, how can we achieve uh, this goal? How can we achieve uh, that there are uh, there is easy to use knowledge base. What should we do for this? Uh, probably the main thing is to maintain knowledge base up to date. Again, I will create from here. 
the parent is selected automatically. They say I have selected it before. Maintain uh, knowledge is up to date. Okay. How do we ensure this quick and effective conversation? Uh, obviously, it all depends on this part of on our agents, first line agents and second line agents. So what we can do, we can formulate it in this way. Maintain excellent conditions for agents. Yeah. Now, uh, for now, we have just mapped few goals and uh, what I want to do now is to link these goals on this map. One interesting thing will happen. The software will ask me this. Would you like to link login part of maintain knowledge base up to date, that goal, to the leading part of easy to use knowledge base? Yes, I want to do this. Uh, you will notice that the maintain knowledge base will appear under this goal easy to use knowledge base. And it has appeared as uh, a leading indicator. In the legend before or below, you will see that the green color stands for leading indicators. So basically, the performance, the login performance of this goal, maintain knowledge base, will now be translated to the leading part of that goal. So these goals are linked now. Uh, we don't see any data yet because we don't have any uh, indicators with data yet, but the connection is there. Let's link in the same way these two goals. Okay. Now, uh, how uh, do we how do we uh, focus our learning and growth efforts? So our customers need easy to use knowledge base and to do so we maintain knowledge base up to date. Uh, how do we make sure that we up maintain knowledge base up to date? Uh, we need to find, we need to focus our efforts on this and I suggest to formulate this goal in this way. Keep knowledge base aligned with new customer behavior habits. What does it mean? It means that new customers, new uh, uh, clients, potential clients have their own idea about how to use the product. I'm thinking right now about BC Designer, of course, but uh, Different companies, different people have their own ideas about what they need, what they're looking for. And we need to focus our learning efforts on understanding what they need, on understanding how we can provide them. And when we have an idea about this, we can maintain knowledge base up to date with fresh, engaging material. If we don't know what our customers need, we'll fail to maintain knowledge base up to date. So that's my logic. I'm not sure if you will agree with me, but that's the logic that works for me. Actually, now we can do, let's switch back here. We can do one interesting thing. We can create some initiative. Uh, how do we uh, keep our knowledge about customers aligned with uh, new behavior habits? Well, probably we should do what I call learn from eggs. What can we make a mistake? We, for example, did a video, we recorded a video, but customers don't understand it. We have a negative feedback on this. So we remove this video, update this video, and we learn from this mistake. We're trying to understand what are the real needs of the customers. We're trying to uh, update our understanding of the customer and make it and, and align it with what actually happens. So, yeah, I have just added an initiative here by this button. 
uh, learn from the mistakes. And this initiative actually appeared here as a blank, uh, white la uh, line here uh, below this goal. Oh, okay. Again, I can connect these two indicators, these two goals. Yeah, by the way, uh, I have used initiatives. I was uh, I will using strategy map. You'll find that on all uh, tabs in BC Design, you have this small icon here, camera icon. So if you want to learn more about some features, you just click on this icon and you will find some video where we'll talk about some specific features of the software. Okay. Mm -hmm. Knowledge base aligned with new customer. Knowledge, keep knowledge aligned with new customer and behavior habits. Sounds good. Now, uh, maintain excellent conditions for the train uh, for the agents. So the logic here is uh, that we have some internal conditions, but we also need to understand where we should focus our uh, gross efforts. In this case, I would formulate this in this way. I would say that we need provide agents with better training and coaching programs. Okay. So that's where we need to focus our learning and growth efforts in this sense. And this will contribute to maintaining excellent conditions for the agents. Okay, so my uh, my diagram is almost ready and we have here free space finance so what's the logic we have easy to use knowledge base we ensured quick and effective conversation between clients and uh, the company and why do we do this what financial outcomes do we expect to achieve let's get back to the cost structure Cost structure is this one. We have some costs for knowledge base. We have some higher costs for agents. So probably that can be some basic goal that I'm going to create now. Reduce costs for a customer service. Service. Okay. Good. Now, uh, let's think about some uh, indicators that we can use to track the performance of these goals. I would skip for now these two goals here and let's focus on this, maintain knowledge base up to date. Up to date. Uh, what indicator can we use? Let's uh, create some indicator and let's call it up to date materials in the knowledge base. Okay. In, in the context of this parent goal, maintain knowledge base up to date. Uh, this indicator, up-to-date materials in the knowledge base, is it lagging or leading, leading indicator? Does it validate that the uh, knowledge base is up-to-date or it helps us to keep knowledge base up-to-date? In this case, it just validates, so I will choose that this indicator is lagging one. And, uh, well, what we have here now, let me check. Now we have here two indicators. We have uh, one leading indicator that is coming from that goal. Keep knowledge aligned with new uh, customer behavior habits, the green one. And we also have the gray one, which is uh, keeping the materials up to date. So how do we supposed to measure this? How do we supposed to uh, measure that the materials are up to date in the knowledge base. So we can do one simple thing. We can uh, use a scale from uh, zero to 
uh, 100 and say that, uh, for example, we're going to use a percent as a way to measure that this knowledge base is up to date. And actually on the context tab here, I can configure how I'm, I want to see this on the strategy map. For example, I want to see gauge chart and I want to see the current value. So that's how it's looked now. Here we have up-to-date materials in the knowledge base and these two lives. So what is the logic now? The logic is that this goal, it doesn't has any numerical value, is contributing to this goal and we measure the outcomes of this goal by this indicator, which now has a performance of 97%. 97% of the materials are up to date. And now this goal is contributing to this goal, easy to use knowledge base. And we see here the leading indicator, which is main knowledge base is up to date with 97% performance. Again, we have uh, contributed to the uh, to this goal, we have leading indicator here that tells us how the things are impacting this goal. And we need some indicator to make sure that this impact actually happens, actually that this impact is positive. So again, we can work from strategy map, but now this time I will do it from here. I will create, pick this parent. Yeah, easy to use knowledge base. And then I will create an indicator and call it, let's call it uh, self-service. Again, it's measured in uh, percent and we can say that it is 75%. Here in the description, we can be more specific about what we mean by this. So probably we take the 100% the are those people who uh, started some, some session with a self-service uh, self and uh, then we track the number of people who were satisfied with the answer. So that's what we do. So what we see now here for this goal, easy to use knowledge base, that it has here two session. The green one is the leading part of this goal. It tells us how good we are influencing, uh, how good we are influencing them. Uh, let me change the measure units, okay. So the leading part tells us how good we are influencing the, this goal, how good we uh, are our efforts. Obviously, this is an example. In the real case situation, you will have more indicators here. But now, so, uh, and the login part, the gray one, tells us uh, what results we achieved. So basically now we see that 97% uh, of the knowledge base is up to date and 75% uh, of the customers are using our service. Okay, what about these indicators, uh, these goals? Uh, what about providing agents with better training and coaching programs? Again, we can come up with some indicators here, but I think I will start just with some initiative. I will uh, pick it here. I will add it and uh, let's call it break what we have discussed in the uh, first part that the informational styles are a problem. So this will be the initiative aligned with this goal. How about uh, the ways to measure the uh, the train the training? Can we come up with some indicators? Well, probably yes. Let's create some basic ones, something like training coverage. So I have in mind some. 
training program. Have in mind some training program and people are supposed to pass it. And let's assume that most of the people will pass it and this will be our login indicator for this. Okay, this login indicator is contributing as a leading factor to mind day and excellent conditions for agents. Obviously, it's not the only uh, only leading indicator. Probably there will be uh, something. Uh, let's not go too much into the details. I will just create a salary indicator, uh, something that should uh, match the salary in this organization, in this customer service unit with similar positions over the market. I have changed this indicator to leading type. So these are the leading indicators. What about login indicators? What can we create here? Uh, probably there we can come up with another uh, indicator and I think it's more leading one. Ad agent occupancy rate. Why it's leading? If we are talking about maintaining excellent conditions, then we should make sure that agents are occupied, but not too much. Yeah, so if they don't have enough work to do, that it's not a good thing. But if that have, they have too much work to do, it's either a good thing. So it, it is leading indicator. And uh, how do we set, set up it? Uh, Let's go to this tab and we'll do some basic setup. So uh, it's measured in, uh, for example, percent. And what about the performance function for this indicator? As I mentioned, it's not a good idea when agents are not occupied and also it's a bad idea when agents are over occupied. So in the optimization function i would choose this one the sign function look at the chart on the right how it changed so the green zone is something somewhere in the middle and we can actually adjust it now it's when it's zero for to uh 40 percent it's red zone so the green zone starts here i guess 80 percent probably it's too much so i will change Let's put the current occupation rate to 65 and the target should be around probably 80%. And how we measure it, but anyway. Yeah, so actually this is one of the ways that uh, you use optimization function in this case. Okay, so I have engine to occupancy, occupancy rate as one, as another leading indicator. Uh, what else? Uh, well, we need some login indicator here as well. Uh, maintain excellent conditions for agents. How do we know that excellent conditions actually uh, give us, actu actually keep top performers in the company? Probably can add uh, measure turnover rate. Mon on both top performers. Okay, so if it's lagging and leading indicator, it's lagging indicator. If the conditions are good, top performers uh, will stay in company. Okay, and again, I will switch here to set up this indicator. Uh, what is, uh, what turnover do we expect to see? We can benchmark it with the company. Uh, with the industry and uh, let's say it's about five percent now uh, do we want to minimize or to maximize the uh, turnover i guess if we're talking about top performers then we need to minimize it and now uh, what about our scale of measurement so probably we should put some realistic numbers here uh, again, we we'll talk about this in a separate video where we discuss the difference between uh, performance and pro uh, progress, uh, how to use all these fields. But uh, this bigger scale is to calculate the performance from min to max. 
and we also have a smaller scale to calculate the progress. So I will put here some baseline can be, for example, 7% and target might be 4.5%. Uh, okay. So we have our first login indicator in this case. Okay, what uh, what about uh, we have this indicator here? Turnover rate, amount of performance. Yeah, we have it here. How do we um, how do we how can we validate the excellent conditions as well? Because turnover rate, I think this indicator is something uh, something. Uh, it's a slower indicator, so we'll see the problems, but we we'll won't see them quickly. How can we see the problems faster? I suggest to add another indicator that uh, we'll call agent satisfaction. It is like an indicator in term of this, uh, in, in the context of this goal, and uh, agent satisfaction will come. Uh, here it should be measured in percent probably the current agent satisfaction is higher and we'll keep it high okay so we have uh, some leading indicators we have some login indicators uh, the software calculates for us here in this block the leading performance of this goal which is actually not uh, used in uh, other calculations so it's for local level only and we have the uh, login performance of this goal that uh, gives us this 50 number actually to an hour rate let's change it to 4.2 so that we'll see that it's actually calculated yeah so i change it and it's changed and uh a good question now is how the performance should be calculated because here we have two indicators uh, both are measured in percent but uh, it's not always the case sometimes the indicator is measured in time uh, sometimes we measure it in uh, us dollars so how to how do the software takes this all into account how the software normalizes it uh, for this purpose we have here on data tab for this goal, we have this value setting. It basically tells what how the value of this goal is calculated. So probably it's taken from the performance and then how the performance is calculated. It's taken from, in this case, it's weighted average. What does it mean? It means that it will take the uh, weighted average of these two indicators, the performance of these two indicators. So for example, how can we play with this? We can say that the weight of turnover rate among top performers is 80%, while the weight of agent satisfaction is just 20%. So we see that the figure here has changed. So basically, uh, that's how we can uh, explain to the software how different indicators affect the performance of the goal by changing the weight by changing the way we calculate the performance and uh, the value of the, of the goal. Again, in a separate video for the KPIs, we discuss this in the details. We discuss how to do this, how to achieve this. Right now, I'm just showing you the possibilities that you have. Moving up. What about this goal? What goals do we have here? Let's think. Uh, quick and effective conversation between a client and the company. What would be the leading indicator for this? Uh, I think average uh, speed of answer is a good indicator. And uh, I also think that in this case, we can say that uh, first contract resolution rate Also a good indicator. 
Uh, actually, the first contact resolution rate in this context is a linear lag indicator. So probably it uh, depends on where we're standing. So probably it's a linear indicator. And can also play a role of, of lagging indicator. What about average speed of answer? I, is it contributing to the uh, quick and effective conversation? I guess yes. So it will be another leading indicator. What about the logging indicators? We should have some to validate our hypothesis. What is our hypothesis in, the, in this case? Our hypothesis is very simple. We have these leading factors, maintain excellent conditions for agents, maintain uh, average speed of answer to respond faster to the queries. We have uh, high first contact resolution rates. All these are leading factors. And we're going to see that these leading factors actually help by looking at satisfaction rate. Satisfaction by the customer service. This will be logging an indication. So the satisfaction. Let's keep it and let's put that it is here. It's not realistic to uh, get to 100%. So I will left 100 for the max, but for Trongit, I will change it to 90%. Okay satisfaction by customer service again i would prefer to specify measure units okay 87 percent this 87 percent are translated to the login part of the goal as well as leading parts i have data only for maintain excellent conditions is translated to the leading part of the goal okay um, what about the financial goal we can actually link this goal to the financial goal and this will give us some leading indicators. Can we come up with more leading or lagging indicators? I think yes, I think yes. So uh, probably we can track the we already have here. Probably we can track a first line resolution rate as another leading indicator. So the more questions are resolved uh, by the first line agent, the more costs are saved. How do we validate the results in this case? Uh, probably we'll have just one one indicator which will be cost per inbound contact uh, and it will be it will be log indicator okay we can put some random data here it's measured in dollars and uh, we have some value in mind. And uh, what we want to do, we want to minimize the costs. Okay, the baseline probably 40, zero, here. Okay, so we have uh, this core cut and it is almost ready. Actually, uh, what we can do here? What else we can do here? We can add some some ideas that would help us to execute the strategy better. For example, um, we have here maintain knowledge base up to date, and uh, we have some indicators that help us to uh, track the percent of the materials that are up to date. What we can do, we can add some initiative. For example, in our case, it would be uh, record uh, update videos for the new features. Yeah, 
and we can add some budget related to this initiative as well as we can add some deadline let's do it until the end of the month we can also assign a person responsible if we need and if we have a plan for video we can uh, link to this plan here yeah so actually this is a nice addition to our strategy map we have this line here just right under the business goal and also we have some reports here so i can create a report that will estimate the cost of this strategy that will summarize all the budget initiatives or i can generate a report that will contain some action plan and that's a good idea okay what else can we do the strategy map is ready but as i mentioned we always deal with some uh, some hypothesis. So how to visualize this hypothesis? Uh, what we can do, we can visualize on the dashboard some uh, something like this. We can visualize the leading part of the one of the goals and I can add another my, uh, what we had here quick and I can actually Visualize the same part, but in this case, I will realize uh, login part. Probably the performances makes more sense. So I have two charts, and the idea is that if the first one will change with time, I will see that the second one is reacting or not. The leading part of this goal will help me to validate the login one. Probably this is not the best chart for this kind of analysis, so I can use this time chart and to this time chart i will be able to add i don't have much data now but i will be able to add on the same chart the line that will correspond to the leading part of the goal i will see how it will be changing and to the login part of the goal i will see how it will be changing as well what else uh, well i can in my scorecard if i will uh, grow the project if I will uh, involve more scorecards I can import to this scorecard some goals or some indicators from other scorecards that I have I can pick some for example some goal from some indicator from sales scorecard and I can put it in my scorecard for example uh, conversation to, uh, to lead conversion rate probably it can be related to uh to this cost saving goal and uh, probably it will be another leading indicator in this case so this indicator is now imported so it's kind of cascading of two scorecards when one goal is supporting another goal and now we just link to scorecard by the indicator i see the sign here so they are linked uh, with analysis, we can find some indicators that require our attention. With alerts, we can uh, involve our, our team. We can send notifications to the members of the team to make sure that they know about important changes. And we can go ahead with the KPIs. We can import some data from uh, MS Excel document or from some database. We can enter data manually. We can invite more members of our team to enter data. There are a lot of options to uh, give those members some rights and limit some rights, limit some rights to the data input only, things like this. We can set up a lot of uh, details related to the indicators. We can define how they will be grouped if we are going to group them if how they will uh, behave if we don't have value for them. A lot of functions that you will find. Again, it's not the video to talk about all these functions. So we have uh, here the link to this uh, video where we can learn about this. So let me uh, read this, this strategy map for you. How do we read it? I prefer to read it from top to bottom. So here, the mission of our customer service is to ensure a quick and effective conversation between a client and the company. 
this will help us to achieve the financial results that we formulated as reducing costs for the customer service. How do we do this? How, what customers' problems do we satisfy? What customers need from us in this case? Customers need from us, according to this model, two things. They need to have easy to use knowledge base and they need to have this quick and effective conversation between a uh, customer and the company. And below we have all the indicators that are very specific uh, about what we mean by, for example, easy to use knowledge base. By easy to use knowledge base, we mean a knowledge base where self-service completion rate is more than 75%. Our target was 100 to 90%. Uh, and how do we ensure this? We see here the leading indicator. So to ensure this, we want to maintain knowledge base up to date. And we have this goal here. And to ensure quick and effective conversation, we want to maintain excellent conditions for the agents. Okay, how do we achieve this? Where should we focus our learning and growth efforts? To maintain knowledge base up to date, we need to make sure that we know about customers' habits, new customer habits especially, new, the needs of customers, and we're able to uh, put them into the knowledge base. So basically, this uh, goal works as a leading factor for this goal. What about maintaining excellent conditions for agents? How do we achieve this? We have uh, this leading uh, factor. We need to provide agents with better training and coaching programs. But besides this, we also will have salary indicator and agent occupancy rate indicator. That's good, but how do we validate this? How do we make sure that we actually maintain excellent conditions for agents? We'll see it through these login indicators. The turnover rate will be lower uh, compared to the historical data, and the agent satisfaction will be high. So the performance of this goal will be high as a result. It will be translated up to the uh, this goal, quick and effective conversation, we'll see this here, Main excellent, maintain excellent conditions, one of the leading factors for this goal, and this goal is validated by uh, customer satisfaction rate. And finally, all this is translated to these financial outcomes. So satisfying customer needs, we do it internally by achieving these goals. We have here some initiatives in mind, how do we supposed to do it in the details. We have some learning and growth efforts to make sure that we are not just repeating old things, but we are learning new things. And all this leads to the desired financial outcomes. So that was a really basic uh, strategy map and balance scorecard created with BC Designer Online. I do recommend for you to give it a try, to try creating it yourself. You'll find this scorecard in the examples uh, section on our website. I also do recommend for you to try Strategy Map Wizard. It is free and it's quite a good uh, helper in this case to get started with your own balance scorecard. As always, should you have any questions, uh, you're welcome to contact uh, BC Designer team using the uh, contact form that you will find uh, on our main page. And uh, I hope we'll be able to help you with your balance scorecard and the BC Designer software will be uh, helpful for you as well. Thank you for your attention.